grail. What's up, guys? It's Quinn. It's Alex. This is Iconic Comic bringing you superhero news. It's the week that was in superhero news, whether it be movies, TV shows, whatever we want to talk about. So, let's get right into this thing. First story on the board is that Forrest Whitaker has just been cast in Black Panther. So, uh, the star uh, who the star of Rogue One uh, has signed on for Marvel's upcoming. Uh, superhero pick starring Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Whitaker is going to play Zuri, an elder statement in Wakanda. Uh, also in the same report uh, from the rap, Florence Kasumba has joined the cast as well, reprising her Captain America Civil War role. Uh, Black Panther is going to hit theaters February 16th, 2018. Uh, the girl was the one who told Black Widow, move. Where you will be moved. Is she White Tiger? I... She might be. I don't I know. think she's White Tiger. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, what... It, was her dad Black Panther? Or no? No. I don't know a whole lot about um, the story of all those guys, but... Um, she got... I, I know she got her powers, like, from her dad. Her dad was once a superhero, and she wears the... Um, she wears something. Kind I hope so. Kind, kind of, well, yeah. Well, it's kind of like what Black Panther has, like the the vibranium, the ring armor. and stuff. Oh, the ring. The okay. ring, and she wears something like that. I I forget, but I'm really excited about Forrest Whitaker being out of this movie. This is probably my second most anticipated Marvel movie coming up. Uh, Doctor Strange right now is at the top of the list. We'll get to that a little bit later. Oh my god! But uh, number two has got to be Black Panther, just because not only the cast, the cast is just killer it's you know the director too yeah. ryan coogler he directed creed creed was fantastic he uh, directed fruitvale station that was another really good movie so marvel's getting these top actors and they're staying true to the story they didn't put a bunch of white people in wakanda it's an african nation and they're casting a lot of good african americans for this movie yeah. um, so i'm really excited about it uh forrest whitaker's great uh, I can't stop looking in his eye though sometimes, <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about it. Are you ready? Moving on. All right. So, uh, the first of the Marvel Netflix shows, uh, Daredevil season one will be coming to Blu-ray. Uh, this is kind of a surprise, uh, considering it. You can watch surprise. it. Surprise. You can watch it right now on Netflix, and I. Have other Netflix shows been released on DVD? I don't. I can't no, think of many. I don't think, so. I don't think Orange is the New Black. I don't think that has been released or anything like that. Uh, but I could be. No, wrong. you mean don't the Netflix play. shows? Yeah, the Netflix. I thought shows. you said Marvel shows. I no, like, the Netflix shows. Have the Netflix know. shows been released on Blu-ray? Mm, Orange is the New Let Black. Us might be. Let us know. Let us know. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. But uh, Daredevil is coming to Blu-ray uh, November eighth. So that's really <laughs> close. Like. It's like in less than a month. So November 8th is getting a Blu-ray release, and it begs the question, since it's already on Netflix to be watched, what's on this DVD? So I'm mm. looking for some really cool special features, I hope. Yeah. That's what I want to like see. Like a lot of um, behind-the-scenes stuff, some of the choreography with the fight scenes. I would like to see the behind-the-scenes of that one iconic they gotta do the hallway. hallway scene. they got to do a breakdown of that. Um but, you know, then it makes me wonder, like, when that comes out, are they going to take it off Netflix? I don't think so. Well, because they, they shouldn't charge that much for it, because you, you can just go and watch it on Netflix. They probably won't, it probably won't be the same price as, like, a normal Blu-ray DVD, because, it's one, it's a show. I've, I've seen, like, Blu-ray shows oh. before, and they're not usually as pricey. Uh, but I'm hoping for a lot of good special features. I want, uh, I want to see interviews with Kevin Feige about this show because I've never heard him talk about this show. Because mm -hmm. right now, Kevin Feige is the producer, the executive producer of Marvel, and the president of Marvel Studios. But he doesn't really muddle with the TV stuff. Mm -hmm. Ike Perlmutter runs all that, and it, I would like to see Kevin Feige give his reactions like. 
yeah, Daredevil is a good step for us, all this other stuff. I'd like to see what he says about that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely, they gotta do the hallway scene. Mm -hmm. They gotta break that down. Definitely. Yep. That was cool. That's my thing. All right, so this is uh, gonna be uh, more of a in-depth, in in-depth uh, thought process on the uh, IMAX footage that was released because the video we released before, that was our instant reaction. We've calmed down a little bit. So we thought it would be a good idea to share our calm down thoughts on the footage that we saw and our expectations moving forward. So... Ah! I thought I said calm. <laughs> it was calm. Was it calm? <laughs> now, um, I thought the, f the footage itself was just why don't you go first so I can compose myself? Okay, so I was really happy with the footage they showed because I was hesitant to go to the footage at all because I was assuming they're going to spoil something because it's 15 minutes. But they really didn't because they basically just expanded on the parts of the trail that we've already seen and they made it a, oh, it was a spectacle. Like, I've never seen visuals like that yeah. in my life. It was I a went trip. To the theater. It was a real trip um, and they showed like who Stephen Strange or sorry doctor uh, <laughs> they showed him who he was and he he was like if Tony Stark was a surgeon and not as funny like as in like not as funny to other people around him like people think he's a dick like yeah <laughs> Like he Tony Stark can get away with it. <laughs> he thinks he's the funniest person alive, which I, I identify that <laughs> or with that. <laughs> um, but you, I mean, it, it characterized him, so you know who he is going into it. He, he is like a Tony Stark that's a surgeon. Um, and I loved the... No, I'm not going to spoil anything, so... Um, I just thought it was really, really well done. I think what this footage did and what people will see when they go check the full movie out is everyone's comparing this movie to the Inception, but the effects are not even close. Mm -hmm. Like they're dip like everybody's like because they see the one, the building's moving. That is the tip of the the pinnacle of the iceberg, and there's so much more that yeah. you see. Uh, I was really pleased with the ancient one. I was a little worried about her casting. I felt awesome. every time she talked, I was learning. Like it was just like I was. She was wise. She gave off that vibe, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Teach me." <laughs> I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, this, like what we saw, it was like a short skirt. It was long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to keep it interesting. Oh yeah, like. <laughs> The stylistic uh, camera shots of this film, they just blow me away because something as simple as him washing his hands before his surgery, it looked beautiful. And yeah. I've, I, I can't say I've seen shots like this, just not the trippy shots, just the way the film looks, I don't think I've ever seen it in a Marvel movie before. Right. It that, looks like... That intimate. It looks like, I don't know, it's a different style of filmmaking and I love it. Yeah. Like just the way he, you know, you know, washes his hands and the camera's, you know, panning in. Maybe it's the way that his hands would have to move for the spells. It show well because the the hands of a surgeon. I'm not a surgeon, so I really don't know. But I'm assuming you have to still hands. the hands of a surgeon are very. They are they are expert hands, um, so I, I would assume you would need that for the type of powers that. He has, you know, just, just the down to the minor details. So let's do a quick like breakdown of in chronological order because we're jumping all over the place. So, what are your thoughts on the opening? Him in the hospital as a doctor and then as an asshole. It characterized <laughs> him. Um, I mean, I I didn't get an. A, like a jerk kind of vibe. He is a jerk. It's but, an arrogance kind of vibe. But he, but the thing is, with people in that profession, you do kind of have to pick and choose, like, what is really worth your time. Um, like, uh, 
I'm just trying to, I'm trying to put my thoughts together. There was a really, really good scene between him and Rachel McAdams, and it, it really showed his character when he asks her on a date or something, and she's like, well, I've been on dates with you before, blah, 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 and he's like, well, come see me talk at this symposium. That's all we used to do, Stephen. Like, it's not about us, it's about you. Yeah, because a person in that position, I'm assuming he's like the head neurosurgeon or whatever kind of surgeon he and is. Best in the world. Like, yeah, the best, he's in, best the in the world. best in the world. So, I mean, if, if that was me, I'd kind of have a big head too, but I would also have to pick and choose my, uh, my patients, I'm assuming. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, nor will ever be one. I don't know. <laughs> the accident. The accident was horrendous. <laughs> Um, it, it was almost hard to watch. It was almost like a horror film scene. Like it, it was, was almost hard to watch. Almost, we still watched it. It was, oh, it was yeah. like a car crash. You couldn't, you couldn't look away. <laughs> um, and I, I like like what you say with the hand washing. I think the hands are very very important because they focus like, in on them. Because the spells, I mean, like you have one finger. Oh, like this could turn you into a frog. This could, you know. Race the world. I, I don't know, but like the, the 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 hand detail, they're really focusing on the hands, which I think will be more apparent once we see the movie and we can give our take on that. But his hands were basically, I mean, you saw it in the trailers, they were destroyed. I mean, there were pins in every one of his fingers, and it was just it looked awful. Like in the animated Doctor Strange movie, they like. He like wrecked into like a mountain, and like that was it. And he was hurt. This mother drives off a friggin' cliff mm -hmm. into a like a construction site, and then into the ocean. Like it was horrific. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> All right, then the the money shot, the trip sequence. I mean. Like as soon as she goes, like with the thumb and goes, it go, it goes into this. I want to say like two or three the minute astro plane. Two or three minute sequence with when he's going through all the, the all the dimensions. She's just kind of showing off, like yeah. <laughs> she's just like, look what I can do, but this is what you could do. Right, you're the chosen one. And, and then it ended with a good little couple snippets of seeing Mads Mikkelsen do some work and he was another question mark because let's be honest Marvel movies are great but what's usually their biggest lacking the villain mm -hmm. I am very very excited about this villain yes. he is menacing but he is he he's almost like a Loki he holds himself like with a sense of I don't know I can't think of the word sense of entitlement yeah and he's just like I deserve to be this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to guess it's kind of like a uh, Kylo Ren almost kind of bad guy. He was probably a student of the Ancient One, and stronger men have lost their way. Right. So, anything else on that you'd like to go No, I'm, I'm just, I'm super excited. Yeah, so. tickets have been bought. Review will be up November so we're going to see it November 3rd on opening night so you guys don't spoil it for us. If we see any comments about spoilers for this movie, you're in trouble. <laughs> we got trouble right here in River City. All right. Go ahead. Moving on. The last uh, big story of the day. Uh, Evangeline Lilly has been confirmed for the fourth Avengers film. It is yet to be titled. Uh, but in at New York Comic Con, Evangeline Lilly did an interview with uh, Blaster.com. Uh, she uh, set the record straight and said that her character, uh, the Wasp, uh, will get an origin story in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then will be introduced as a part of the uh, ensemble in Avengers 4. So she will not be in Infinity War. Kind of a surprise to me, but... I'm still guessing, even though they've changed the titles, that Avengers 4 will be the end of the Thanos conflict. That's coming after 
both Infinity Wars? No, no, no. So Avengers Infinity War is 2018. Avengers 4, Untitled, is 2019. So they're a year apart. Originally it was Infinity War Part 1, Part 2. They got rid of the Part 1 and Part 2. This one's just Infinity War, and they're going to title this one something different. But they said they haven't really changed the story. They're still shooting the films okay. back to back. It's nine months of shooting, and the budget is $1 billion. <laughs> That is friggin' insane. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. But um, I think, I I just hope they don't, I mean, I know it's 2018, but I hope they don't rush things. Um, cause it's that, not like they're doing Justice League next year. <laughs> uh, it's, that story is just, it's so layered. That I, I just I really don't want want them to rush it. I want them to do a good job. So I want them to do two movies worth of it. I think it's it, like, I think it calls give me, for it. Give me give me the best movie you can, you know. Um, don't don't try to put two movies into one because then that's just a lot and things are going to get missed that are crucial to the plot. Just give me the best Infinity War that you can give me. I. I'm excited about the Wasp being involved because she she was one of the first Avengers. Like, in the first Avengers comic, she was in it. Like, she was in the original team. Uh, originally, Joss Whedon wanted to put her in the first Avengers. And, like, she would be introduced in that movie. I couldn't see that working out. Like, I don't know. I think it was a good call to it's wait. It's easy to say that, though, because we've already had an established... It's easy to say, but I feel like that movie was almost just... It almost broke how big it was. You add a couple... You add Ant-Man and the Wasp and use that movie as their origin story, I think it takes away from the other characters. Oh, yeah. But my question is, I wonder if Ant-Man is going to be in Infinity War. Because he's already been introduced. He's well, been yeah. in Civil War. Why wouldn't he be? I mean, yeah, why wouldn't he be? But you never know. Because the, the movie there, so it's Infinity War, uh, then it's Ant. I want to say it's Ant Man and the Wasp, and then Captain Marvel, and then uh, Avengers 4. So Ant Man and the Wasp is in between these two Avengers movies that have the connected stories. So that's a weird film to have in between those. Captain Marvel I can get because she's cosmic. You can make an origin story in between these two movies and then like make her a really big player in this mm -hmm. one. These street level characters, like if Ant Man was fighting Thanos somewhere in Infinity War and then he comes back and he goes back out. So maybe he's not involved until the fourth movie. So I don't know. Uh, either way, like I want to see those two with the group. Yeah, here here's my thing though, with, with Avengers four Okay, let me start over. When you do like, like the Avengers animated series, there like there's one on Netflix that is really really cool, um, really cool to watch. Each episode kind of has its own, its own thing. Like you don't have to watch it chron chronologically. It's like one of the solo movies. <laughs> well, yeah, each one is its own thing, but it's one series. But with the movies though. It's kind of been building off of the previous movies, so how far can they? How how long can they really do that? Till Avengers four, I have no doubt in my mind. After Avengers four, it, it's going. Well, duh. <laughs> I'm saying after Inven Avengers four, they still have movies planned after that. Like they have, they're untitled right now. They don't have titles out for or what these movies are going to be, but they have slots for 2020, 2021. They said they have movies planned until 2030. I think is what they said, and yeah. My best guess is that Avengers 4, at the end, it's going to be like a soft reboot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they're going to bring it back down. Because, like, you can't go Thanos and then go bigger, bigger, bigger and keep going. Like, you kind of you, you <laughs> have to take a, take a couple of years to breathe. Like, what they did with, you know, the first phase one. I, I think they should, you know, they end it big big spectacle event and then let's focus back on the small heroes like yeah. the, the small goals like Spider-Man saving the city block like a movie about that and then 
give it time, let it build back up to mm -hmm. Galactus, because Fantastic Four is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You mark my words right now. You heard it here first. Probably not. But, anyway, we're excited uh, about Avengers 4 and Infinity War, and we got our tickets already. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alright, so, last but not least, our throwback movie of the week. X-Men The Last Stand. This movie came out ten years ago. Ten years ago. Oh, gosh. Like, I feel old. <laughs> I remember liking this movie, though, when it came out. Yeah. It's one of those movies that you drink that Kool-Aid because you're a fan. Remind me what happened, because they're starting to run again. So, in The Last Stand, Jean Grey came back to life after she died at the end of X-Men 2 saving everybody like with the water so she came back uh, to life she, as the Phoenix Force her and Wolverine and he's crawling up the like the little hill and he's like ah, yeah that, and she kills okay. she kills Cyclops which was bullshit I got it and I just this movie could have been like the end of a great like X-Men 1 and 2 wait was that like I'm the juggernaut bitch yep <laughs> that okay I got it and there's this random drug that they created to get rid turn, of like, mutant powers. Turn you back into it just it. doesn't even make sense because these mutants, that's their genealogy. Like if yeah. you did that you might as well just kill them. Like you can't do that. It'd be like, I'm gonna inject you with this. Like if he was black, you're white now. You know, I've changed your genealogy. There's nothing that could possibly do that. And then they did it to Magneto. But then and then they back. said screw that it doesn't mean anything. He, he moves the, the chest, chest piece. piece. <laughs> like, it's it, this is the this was the start. This was the beginning of the end of the X Men movies yeah. until First Class came along. Like, this came out. They had they had to take a breather and step back. This then, this is what started the confuddled timeline of the X Men movies. Yeah, like that was X Men one and two are amazing. I love X Men two. X two oh, is that was awesome. Amazing. And like, but then it was like different director. So like Brian Singer directed the first two. You have a different director coming in for the third one. Brian Singer knew when to get the hell out of there, and he messed it up. And then I'm pretty sure the next movie was Origins. I'm fairly certain. And then it was. We're trying to talk about that one. <laughs> first Class. First Class was Matthew Vaughn directed it. So like he kind of started to get back on track, and then Days of Future Past. And then Brian Singer was back on board, uh, but God, X Men Three could have been something amazing. Like, yeah, it was basically a big movie of spectacle shots that meant nothing. Like, Angel, it's just there. There were so many shots in that movie of just look at my powers. Bye. I had no character, <laughs> no development of my character whatsoever. I liked the way Angel looked in Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I thought he was like he looked better. A now. cool character. Why? But. <clears throat> ah! This movie gives me headaches. It's like, I feel like Jean Grey right now. <laughs> and they totally <laughs> screwed up the Phoenix Force. This is not what that looks like on film. Like, she should be. That's what I think Apox, uh, Apocalypse. Apocalypse. I, don't, I didn't like the movie that much, but I think the look of the Phoenix Force was spot on. Yeah, that was cool. In X Men 3, it was just. Black eyes, swirly energy, and Wolverine disintegrating every step he took. Mm -hmm. I, did, I probably did cry though when he was, I love you, Gene, <laughs> and killed her. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was pretty. I was pretty that was a dope heart. Scene. Like, that, that was heart wrenching a little bit, but I I wasn't invested because the movie was not that. Good. And they killed Professor X. What the hell? <laughs> like that made zero sense. You think Professor X would let that happen? The two, the two most, well, I would say the three most powerful mutants in the world are Magneto, Professor X, and probably Jean Grey. Yeah. But Professor X could just go, stop. You're done. <laughs> Shutting you down. <laughs> like, go to sleep. Oh, but guess what? He didn't die either, because he came back. Oh, my God. Like, I, I think at the end of the movie, when Fox watched the final cut, they were like, 
we gotta fix this shit. And they just right. like rub their faces. Put like, like oh all right, gosh. hey, put like six after credit scenes in. Everybody's live. We're gonna fix this, okay? We're gonna fix this with <laughs> X Men Origins. <laughs> We're gonna put Deadpool in. It's gonna be great. I think Fox has just realized. All right, Deadpool's our only hope. Let's go for it. All right, so that was our throwback movie of the week, and that was this week's superhero news. All right, make sure you uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you guys thought. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, so that you don't miss a single thing. Um, let's see. Our Walking Dead video has almost 3,000 views. Blew up, like, almost overnight, so go, go check that out. I um, think, uh, think that's it, right? Music. Holy grail.